Hello, everybody. Welcome or welcome back to the Poor Decisions Podcast, a podcast where poor decisions are made right. I am your host, Sydney Christensen. What the fuck is up? How's everybody doing today? Happy Monday. Happy, happy Monday. It's the last week of February, everybody. Can we believe it? We are two months into 2024, and let me just say, these two months, it's just a free trial for the new year, because I refuse to have the rest of my year be like this. These past two months have not been it. I think we can all agree. All of my friends can definitely agree. Everybody that I've talked to has just been like, damn, these past two months have kind of fucking sucked, and I can agree, but it's okay. We're gonna go into March with a new mindset. Mindful March. Mindful March. I just made that up. We're gonna make it happen. I have so many things going on in March, and I'm so excited, and I think that it will help me with my mindset recently because I have so many trips planned. I gotta get my shit together for it, you know what I'm saying? So that's the plan for March. That is the plan. Spring break is next week, and I literally leave for Cabo a week from today, and I'm so fucking excited. You have no idea. I'm going with all of my friends from school and my best friend, and I'm just so fucking excited. Like, I feel like everybody that I'm going with just needed this trip, so we're all just kind of counting down the days. But I gotta prep for so much. Usually, I go on vacations with my family. I've never gone on a vacation without my parents or my best friend, Chloe, and they're not coming with me. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to, like, really, really prepare for this trip, because usually my parents got it all figured out, but no, I gotta get it all figured out. I'm so blessed and lucky and i'm so excited to go i wish they could come with me though i love my family but i unfortunately am sick right now i don't know what i have you can probably hear it in my voice but i am just so stuffed up you know like the nasal rinses where you have to like squeeze the bottle of salt water and it goes through your nose and stuff and it like clears out your system i've been having jesus you can definitely hear it in my voice i've been having to do that literally every day i literally just did it right before i started filming this because i needed to breathe out of my nose and my ears have been hurting and my throat's been sore but it's okay we're gonna get it all figured out i just don't want to be sick during spring break that'll not be good at all i'm slowly and slowly getting better though last night was the first night that i actually got a full eight hours of sleep when i didn't wake up in the middle of the night which was amazing i have not been sleeping well recently so yeah we're gonna get rid of this sickness we're gonna fight off this whatever the fuck I have. Honestly, not a lot has been going on recently. Last week was a really chill week compared to what has been happening the past few weeks. I think everyone's just really burnt out and really tired and everyone's waiting for spring break. So I think when spring break happens and when it passes, everyone will kind of be back on their bullshit again. But one thing did happen really last week, which was really fucking funny. So last week I had released an episode where I was just talking about what was going on in my life. In a nutshell, I was seeing this guy things didn't work out but he would always kind of like tag me along then he got a new girl it was not fun it was not good it was a rough week so i had filmed that episode on friday night and then i had went out saturday and then saturday he was there with his girl girlfriend i don't know if they're dating i've been hearing that they're dating but i'm not going to say like oh their boyfriend and girlfriend because none of them have confirmed it with me but he was with this girl and i didn't talk to him the whole night because there was simply no reason to like i didn't have a reason to talk to him but he ended up leaving and his girl she ended up staying which i thought that was kind of weird that's just me personally i don't know if i'm in a relationship or if i'm seeing somebody i would like to leave the bar with them that's literally just me i don't know i'm not gonna crawl deep into that they could do whatever they want but the girl she came up to me and she was like oh my gosh like you're sydney right and i was like yeah i'm sid whatever i didn't even know her name the only reason i knew who this person was is because she was his girl you know and she was just talking to me she's really fucking nice she was so sweet and she was like follow you on everything like i love your content and stuff and i was like oh my gosh like you're what like you're so cute like can we please be friends but i think it's funny because she has no idea that I have history with her man and I thought that was kind of funny but later in the week I went to go tan with my friend Ivana because it's been so beautiful in Arizona like the weather has been 
immaculate. The UV was like six pretty much the whole week. We were all tanning. It was great. She had asked me if I wanted to come tan with her and come over and I was like, duh, obviously. Plus, I haven't seen Ivana in forever. So it was like a win-win situation. And then our friend Montez ended up joining us and we were all just together. We were just talking, catching up. And she was talking to me about the podcast episode and she was like, oh my gosh, I listened to the episode. Is it about Caesar? And I was like, yeah, it is. And I was like, you're never gonna believe this though. And I told her, oh, his girl had came up to me on Saturday at the bar and I was like but the girl's so nice like she's so sweet like she's a fucking sweetheart and Ivana was like oh my gosh let me see her and I was like yeah and so I pulled up her Instagram and I go to show Ivana and Ivana was like oh my gosh she's really pretty and then I show our friend Montez who's sitting next to me and he was like Ivana this is we're gonna give her a nickname i'm gonna I'm actually text ivana and ask her what nickname i should give her on the pod oh god somebody texted me and didn't want to text me that's nice i don't think they're gonna respond <laughs> so i show montez who this girl is and montez goes ivana like are you fucking kidding me this is da 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 and ivana was like no fucking way that it's her and i was like what like no way you guys know this girl so ivana has this friend that she's setting me up with and we've been kind of hitting it off or whatever like there's no labels or anything we're just kind of fucking with each other you know what i mean so ivana starts to tell me that the girl that caesar is seeing used to see the guy that i am seeing which what are the fucking odds bro when ivana and montez both told me that i was like there's no fucking way that this is all connected somehow like what the fuck like i think that's so ironic like we literally swapped men <laughs> Like, what the fuck? Are you serious? I just think that's fucking crazy. Like, what are the fucking odds that happens? Seriously, what are the fucking odds? Literally fucking ridiculous. So yeah, that's been the most interesting thing that's been going on within my week. Also, this is really fucking funny too. Later in the day, we were all in Ivana's room and she was talking about her ex-roommate. I was like, oh my gosh, like, let me see her, blah, blah, blah. And she was like, yeah, she lived in Northern California, which is where I'm from. And I was like, oh, what part? And she's like, oh, she lives in, she lives in Livermore, which is the town that I used to competitively cheer at. My cheer gym was literally in Livermore and it's like about 20 30 minutes away from where I grew up. I was like, no fucking way, let me see her. Her ex-roommate? was friends with somebody that I cheered with that I was really close to and I've like gone out and like partied with her in high school like what are the fucking odds what are the fucking odds I also think it's really funny because um Montez, Ivana, and all them they all stayed in my dorm last year and they were like on the same floor or the floor below or above I can't remember Montez was on the same floor as me I think Ivana was on the floor above I might be wrong on that. And I used to see one of the guys that they used to all hang out with, but me and Ivana, we literally never met my freshman year, and we didn't meet until this year, which I think is so fucking funny because I fucking love Ivana. Like, that's one of my best friends. I swear to God. She's so funny. So yeah, that's been like the craziest thing that's like happened this week. I think it's fucking hilarious, to be honest. I think it's funny how everybody's fucking connected somehow. Like, you know that TikTok sound where it's like, no matter where you are, you're always connected or whatever the fuck. That's literally how I've been feeling this whole week. I remember I told my mom because my mom was visiting this past week. She actually left today, which is so sad. <laughs> so unfortunate. And I was telling my mom and she was like, this shit would happen to you. Like, what the fuck? Like, what are the odds? And I was like, I know. It's awful. So fucking awful. JK, I actually think it's really funny, you know? All right, now that I've spewed about what's been going on in my life, let's get into the actual topic of today's episode today we are doing another episode of girl talk because i looked at the little girl talk form where you can put in your questions or whatever you're going through and i got a lot of responses and i just feel like i need to just answer them right now i don't know so today is another episode of girl talk i'll be giving you my advice on whatever situation you're in if you want to be featured on the next episode of girl talk i will put in the description a little form you could fill out you can fill out any questions stories Anything you want to be shared, anything you want advice on, and I will most likely answer them at some point. Also, I feel like whenever I try to film literally fucking anything, my complex decides to get really active. Like downstairs, my neighbors, I think it's like air conditioning, I don't know what the fuck it is to be honest. It's just going off and it's really loud and the birds were like chirping and there was dogs barking. God, every time I actually try to be like fucking productive, see, you can probably hear the birds chirping. <laughs> There's always something 
there's always something that tries to like stop me from it or annoys me. All right, let's get into girl talk. How to make friends in college when you're not in a sorority. So, so I'm not in a sorority. I don't really affiliate myself with Greek life. And I would say that I've made probably the bestest of friends. Like I have a pretty good group of people that I surround myself with. Now, what helped my case a lot is my freshman year. I was in club sports and that helped me meet a lot of new people. But if you're a freshman, this is what I did. I literally went around my dorm and just started meeting new people. I was literally going from door to door, just meeting people, just saying hi, trying to be everybody's friend. Parties too, I would literally just go up to random people. And you don't necessarily just have to go up to somebody and just be like hi i'm sydney or whatever you could literally just go up to somebody and be like hey i really like your top i really like your necklace your hair whatever start with a compliment and most of the time they'll be like oh my gosh thank you like i like your whatever and then you could go what's your name and then just start that conversation from there i talk to a lot of people in my classes too for example that's how me and ivana met we got paired up for like a group project and then we just started talking and then never stopped talking since. Easier said than done, but simply just having a basic conversation with somebody can lead into a friendship, going to club events, going to school events. I don't know. I just love talking to people personally. So I think that's the best thing that you could do. How do I figure out if my long-term relationship is toxic and not what I want anymore? I'm going through so much and I'm just confused. All right. <laughs> let's dive in. Figuring out your relationship is toxic is a really weird experience. At the end of the day, you just have to sit yourself down and be like, okay, am I happy in this relationship? Am I happy with the way that this person is treating me? And am I even happy with this person in general? My last relationship was pretty toxic and I knew it started to be toxic when my friends, when my friends were hinting that it's toxic. I remember my roommate, she would always be like, I don't know, the way that he does this just doesn't seem right and he shouldn't be doing whatever he was doing at that time. Same with my friend Sammy. Um, at this time, she was a little more <laughs> quiet about her opinion on my relationship, but I knew when she wouldn't, when I would talk about my relationship and she wouldn't say anything, she would just be like, I don't know, like, <laughs> like, oh, you know? When your friends are not saying the most positive things about your partner, there is a sign that you should either break up or that it might potentially be toxic. But I knew my last relationship was toxic when I was literally fucking crying every night about it because I would be really, really upset. Whenever my partner would be mad at me, he would literally not talk to me for like 24 hours. He would leave me to do whatever. Like he wouldn't text me back. He wouldn't call me. And he wouldn't tell me like, I'm not going to talk to you for a while. He would just not talk to me and do whatever the fuck he wanted. My partner also didn't want me going out. My last relationship didn't want me to have a lot of my friends that I had made my first semester of college because I was in a because I was in a relationship my spring semester of my freshman year. He didn't like a lot of my friends that I had became friends with and that I actually genuinely loved hanging out with and that's pretty toxic in my opinion because I wouldn't care if he went out or talked to whoever he wanted. I'm just not insecure like that end of story. If you are isolating yourself from people as well, I started isolating myself a lot from my friends and my family. I wouldn't, I literally wouldn't tell my mom like what was going on. I would kind of lie to her and she'd be like, oh like, have you been going out? And I've been like, yeah, like I've been doing whatever when literally I was just like in his dorm all day, like hanging out with him or in my dorm, just rotting away. This is a hard question just because I don't know the insights of your relationship. Like, I don't know what your partner is doing that makes you think the relationship might turn toxic. But if you're already thinking like, oh, my relationship might be toxic, it's probably either getting toxic or toxic. That's just what I found was toxic in my relationship. It might be different for you. But if you're thinking it's toxic, it's probably toxic. I don't know how to word this well, but basically what do you do when your friend is in a relationship and you know they deserve to be treated so much better and every time they talk about their relationship situationship, it makes you want to bang your head against the wall because from an outside perspective, you know it's bad, but you don't want to come across as a hater. You just truly want the best for them. Ooh. I had a friend my freshman year who was in a relationship and we all didn't like her boyfriend. He was very insecure and basically wanted her to isolate herself from the world and whatever. And honestly, this fucking sucks, but there's nothing that you can really do. But listen, you can have your own opinion, but at the end of the day, your, your opinion is not going to matter. 
to this person because at the end of the day they're gonna have to make the choice whether to continue with the relationship or to end the relationship and you could tell them you need to end it you need to end it you need to end it but it's their choice most of the time if they're just talking to you and like complaining about the relationship or just explaining what's going on within their relationship it's because they just want somebody to listen you just got to be there for them honestly until they realize what they have isn't gonna work out or they don't like it and yeah it would be for the best for them to end this relationship but it's not your relationship you know you just got to be patient with that person and understand they're actually going through this situation you could continue to be vocal about it but like i keep saying that person's mind is already made up about who they're with and if you've told them multiple times and multiple times like hey you should end this this person isn't good for you and they haven't listened they're probably never gonna listen so there's not much you can do unfortunately you're just gonna have to be there for when either it ends or continue to be there and hear them out but if it's one of those situations where it's literally draining the fuck out of you because it's all they could talk about then you need to tell that person hey I'm, i'm gonna be completely honest this is fucking draining and it's draining me and they're most likely not gonna like that you said that but what are you gonna do You can't listen to somebody complain about the relationship and complain about their well-being when they're the reason they're in that situation. I feel like that's really harsh advice, but it's really true. But it's true. Like, I'm calling myself out for that, too. I used to complain all the time about, like, my situation and my relationship, but I wouldn't end it. And that's my decision and that's my fault. How do you know when you're ready to lose your virginity? Virginity can be a very controversial subject. A lot of people have their opinions on it. Personally, I think it's just one of those things when like you know you know. I lost my virginity to somebody who was really special to me at that time and no regrets to be honest. It's just one of those things where if you feel like okay like my body's ready and like I'm mentally ready to go through that next stage then go for it. Virginity Virginity can be a very scary thing, obviously. I feel like, I feel like all throughout, I feel like we all dramatize virginity and all that. I don't know, that's my personal opinion. Yeah, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, like, when you know, you know, and when you know you're ready, you're ready. My advice for losing your virginity, though, I recommend losing it to somebody that, like, you know you're not going to regret losing it to. And just make sure that you're ready to take that next step with that person you may potentially lose it to. Here's my situation. Me, female, 20 years old, and a guy, male. 20 met through work both just got out of a long-term relationship we got really close and flirty on the down low one day he got drunk and called me at 3 a.m asking if i could pick him up nearby and of course i said yes once i picked him up he basically told me how much he liked me and how he can't get me off his mind he went on and talked about me being beautiful and all that he could think about for almost two hours before i dropped him off at home after that night we both agreed that we felt the same way and started to go on dates after two weeks he started to get distant he ended up saying that he wasn't in the right state for a serious relationship i was already for one so I backed off. Then we started mutually hooking up and now it's purely exclusive sex. What are your thoughts? Should I let go? I know we both have feelings, but it's not the right time for either of us to commit to a serious relationship. Ooh. Okay, little miss situationship. This is what that sounds like. Okay, if you are just hooking up and it's exclusively just sex, like there's no going on dates, there's no hanging out, it's one of those things where it's are you sure he has genuine feelings for you or if he just wants to hook up because if the relationship is now just exclusively sex then it just sounds like he just wants to hook up now he was saying that he was not in the right mindset for a serious relationship but then you said like that you were in the mindset for one personally i wouldn't continue with this because i feel like in the long run if this was me in this situation i would be getting hurt more with continuing to have a sexual relationship with this person if i had genuine feelings and was ready for the relationship i just went through this not that long ago and it fucked me up more staying with him and just casually hooking up and like waiting around for the relationship to get serious because if he's not ready for a relationship now but you guys are hooking up when will he ever be ready for a relationship like that just doesn't sit right with me personally if i was in your situation i would end things because hooking up with him consistently is going to hurt you more in the long run when you're just like waiting for a relationship you know what i'm saying i personally would end it but if it's one of those things where like you know it's just casual sex and you don't want anything out of it then continue with it if you're having fun but it sounds like you want a relationship with this person and i just don't see it happening if the relationship is just exclusively sex like i said if he's not ready for a relationship now but continuing to hook up with you When the fuck will he be ready for a relationship? What's a good self-care routine to go by when you need to unwind? I love to garden, 
when I am stressed. If you know, you know. That is what helps me unwind. But other than gardening, I honestly just love to make myself sit down and watch a comfort show or a comfort movie. My comfort show is Gossip Girl and Austin and Allie. I fucking love Austin and Allie. And then my comfort movies are The Wizard of Oz and Someone Great. Someone Great is the best fucking female empowerment movie, by the way. If you have not watched that movie, please do. Such a good fucking movie. Um, another comfort movie of mine is 10 Things I Hate About You great movie oh my gosh i also love doing my makeup when i'm stressed out weirdly doing my makeup is just something i always loved to do as a kid i would literally sit at my vanity desk and just play with my makeup for hours so that's just something that kind of brings back like my inner childhood self and it makes me happy and it makes my soul happy the guy i have casually been hooking up with keeps getting back together with his hometown girlfriend should i stay hooking up with him or what should i do girl do not keep hooking up with him if he keeps going back to the same bitch <laughs> do not keep hooking up with him come on now oh my god please don't please don't that could get you in a very easily sticky situation if they keep breaking up and getting back together you honestly could never know when he is single he could come to you and be like oh yeah we broke up again but you don't know if they broke up get out of that situation get out of that situation right now no don't that is messy messy you don't want to deal with that oh my fucking god that's crazy not crazy because of you crazy because of him i just can't believe men sometimes like what the fuck wild i'm a junior in high school and there are constant rumors about me that are simply not true how can i cope with this and what can i do to avoid this oh girl i had like every fucking rumor in the book go around me in high school holy shit even when i fucking graduated i had people who were still in school still texting me being like oh yeah like this is being said about you people are so fucking weird people are so weird and will make up anything and anything but what i would do to deal with this i honestly just got to the point where like well if they're talking about me they're talking about me i'm gonna fucking own it i know that it's not true and if they believe that it's true that's on them as i was just saying like when i graduated there was a rumor about me i guess there was a rumor about me that i hooked up with like some fucking teacher at my school which not fucking true at all people are so bored <laughs> Even though I don't go to that school anymore, I just fucking owned it. Like, I was like, well, if they think I hooked up with the teacher, I guess I hooked up with the teacher. Nobody ever is going to have the balls and confront you about the rumor. Nobody ever is going to come up to you and be like, hey, I heard you did this. Like, a random person's never going to fucking do that. They're just going to fucking play sheep and follow whatever the crowd says. If you know it's not true, and if you know the closest people to you know it's not true, who cares? Who cares? At least they're talking about you. At least you got some fans. What I would do to cope with it is I surrounded myself with people who knew the true me, knew that I would never do whatever was said about me. Rumors suck and rumors are hard. You'll get through it. I'm really sorry you're going through that, but fuck them. Who cares? Keep being you. This one's really, really fucking funny. What Taylor Swift era do you think you're in right now? Me and Sammy, we literally say this all the time. We're like, oh my god, what era am I in right now? And we'll like play like a guessing game. I like to do my Taylor Swift eras as zodiac signs, like my sun, my moon, and my rising. I think my sun right now is probably midnights. My mood, 1989, and my rising's reputation because I'm making myself have a comeback after the past two months that I've had. And I'm in a really big party era, but kind of like how midnights is, I'll just go home and be a little bit sad. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So maybe I'm in my like midnights era. I don't know. Her new album's coming out in like two months, two and a half months. I don't know math. Maybe I'm the tortured poets department era right now and just don't know it yet. I'm so fucking excited for that album though. I was though, I will say, when we're talking about Taylor Swift eras, I was in my folklore era for a good six months. That album has been number one on my fucking like little Apple replay for three years. It will probably be for four years after this year's over. But yeah, that's a really fun question. Okay, a little bit swifty. I see you. Let's do three more questions. I've been lying to my friend about a situation with a boy. Is it bad that I'm lying to her? I understand where you're coming from. I have been in a situation where I do not want to tell one of my girlfriends the entire truth of a guy that I am seeing like a situation that I'm in. This is mostly with like people I go back to. Like I don't want them knowing that I'm going back to them. And the reason why you are lying is because you have this guilt and have this shame. Like you kind of feel like, oh, like I don't want them to look at me differently. But I promise you if they're a true friend, they're not going to look at you differently. They just genuinely want what's best for you. Do I think it's bad that you're lying to a friend? 
I'm not going to say it's bad, but I'm not going to say it's good. I understand why you might be lying to a friend about a boy, but do I think you should be lying about it? No. I think you should just tell your friend what's going on. And I think you'll have like a weight lifted off of your shoulders when you do that. I'm a senior in high school and I'm starting to hear back from colleges I applied to. How do you know that you're choosing the right college? I could literally make a whole episode about this. I applied to, I think, about 10 or 12 schools and I got into eight of them. And I was in between four schools. And that was SDSU, U of A, Sac State, and San Francisco State. This can be hard because if you applied to out-of-state schools, this could be a harder task to kind of achieve. My best advice to you is to tour the campuses that you're really, really interested in. If I never toured U of A, I probably honestly would have never accepted my application here. Touring a college makes a whirlwind of a fucking difference. I was really set on Sac State too because I wanted the cheer in college and I had already spoken to the coach of Sac State and all that, but I hated the campus. I really didn't like the campus. The campus didn't feel like home. Same with San Francisco State. The San Francisco State school is just not it in my opinion. I didn't love it. SDSU was absolutely beautiful, I will say that. I toured there my junior year of high school. Very, very pretty. But I just loved U of A. When I walked onto U of A campus, I just knew that it was home. And plus, I had an offer to cheer on their competitive cheer team, so that kind of helped me make my decision a bit, too. But I would definitely tour if that's something you could do. If not, do extensive research on your school and the program that you're gonna be in. When I applied to college, I actually was planning on being an elementary school teacher. So I looked into all the elementary school programs and then I decided like, oh, I was gonna change it to business. Looked at all the business programs that like the schools had to offer. U of A has one of the top, I think it's top 10 business schools in the United States. Don't put my word on that. We're a really big business school though. Like the Eller College, absolutely stunning. Also look into the social life too of your school. The only thing I knew about socially about U of A is that it was a party school. I didn't know it was so Greek affiliated. If you want to go to a school that's like really Greek life affiliated, look to see if any of the schools you applied to has any of that. I was excited to go to U of A because it was like a top 10 party school. (laughs) So I was ready. But literally look on every single website you can find. Look on every single social media platform. TikTok has probably the best information about schools. Like socially, you could see like what students are up to. Picking a college is extremely difficult, and I know you have a lot of weight on your shoulders because this is going to be the next four to six years of your life, so just do your research thoroughly. Tour if you can. I really advise to fucking tour. I also had looked at Fresno State College. Their campus was absolutely beautiful. I just didn't like the area that it was in. Just tour. Take your time. I know it's a really stressful few months, like, picking your college, but I promise the college you pick is probably going to be the best choice for you. All right, let's do one last question. How do you feel about going on a break in a relationship? I don't like it, personally. My first relationship, I'm going to take accountability. We would always go on breaks and it would be my fault. Like, I would be I would be pretty toxic about it. And once you go on one break, like, there's a door open to go on another break and another break and another break. I believe me and my first boyfriend, we went on, like, four three to four breaks before we officially ended things. It's just not fun. It's not cute. I feel like going on a break is just like, oh, let me see if there could be other contenders to like other relationships or whatever. And I'm guilty of this. I'm not going to lie. Like I'm guilty of it. I'm not a fan of breaks. I don't think they're efficient. I don't think they're worth it in the relationship. If you're going to be in a relationship with a person, you need to plan on staying in a relationship with that person, if that makes sense. Alrighty, that concludes our episode of Girl Talk today. I'm so happy I got to talk to you again one-on-one. I really love filming episodes like this, and I love that you guys are trusting me with advice on your personal life and whatever's going on. If you want to be featured on our next episode of Girl Talk, I'm going to have a little link to the form in the description. You can also go to our Instagram, and you will find the link and you could find the link to the form to enter whatever questions you have, whatever topic you want me to talk about. I got you, girl. I got you. I also want to say thank you for all the love that I got on my last episode where I just talked to you and opened up about what's going on in my life. I got a lot of personal messages that honestly, like, warmed my heart so much. Like, I didn't know a lot of people felt the same way that I did. So thank you for liking that episode. I will definitely film more episodes like that. I just love having little one-on-one moments with you guys like that. I think it's so fun. Anyways, if you want more of the Poor Decisions podcast, you can follow us everywhere at the Poor Decisions pod on Instagram, TikTok. You can subscribe to our YouTube, and you can follow us on Apple, 
podcast and spotify and if you want more of me your host you can find me everywhere at cindy christensen with two eyes on tiktok and on instagram and you can find me on my youtube and subscribe to that at cindy christensen i'm actually going to go edit my next video after i conclude this episode and i'm really excited about it but again thank you guys for listening thank you guys for watching subscribe like do all that good shit and i will see you on next week's episode i love you guys so much thank you for listening i will see you when i see you bye peace out